theorist thanks to dr vds chalapathi rao uh, associate professor of uh, biotechnology department of uh, loyola college hyderabad uh, and your team for inviting me to this uh, webinar uh, actually we are one of the national laboratory of covid testing uh, so we are involved with the covid testing since uh, nearly last uh, two months time today my topic is covid 19 a battle between the primitive creature and modern science now hello first slide please first slide can i get the first slide please so this is the topic actually is it is it visible yes sir yes okay now but the slide is not opening Davala. I, sir, I, I will change this slide. Chattopadhyaya, yes. sir. Modern science and ancient creature. Next slide. Next slide. First of all, I want to introduce, because I, I also convey my uh, thanks to the previous speaker uh, who has covered the entire uh, lecture into all aspects of the virus. But now I'm going to the basics because I have started virology in 1997 and that time the definition of virus was not very prominent to understand the virus definition i have to read at least four or five pages of the book so in 1999 i have introduced a virus definition which now accepted by all the uh, community and actually it is now in the books also viruses actually are defined as our cellular ultra microscopic nucleoprotein particles. They contain gene strands of either RNA or DNA, but never both. And they may contain a lipid envelope or may not. They are basically the obligate intracellular parasites, utilize the host cell machinery to propagate and cause elements as benign as common word, as irritating as cold, and as deadly as bloody African fever, as well as other viruses. Some of the virus can spread easily, can kill, kill swiftly, and many have no cure or no vaccines. Next slide. Next slide, please. Now, the viruses have numerous invasion strategies each strain has its own unique configuration of surface molecule and that enable them to enter the host cells by precisely fitting their surface molecule with the molecule of the target cell. Now, this is one of the major character and you know, all viruses have a very strong character. They are not characterless and this virus is also the same. I will come to the character of these viruses later on. The major evolutionary advantages of viruses is their genetic variation, variety of transmission, efficient replication, and ability to persist within the host. And as a consequence, viruses have to adapt to all forms of life. They occupied numerous ecological niches and widespread diseases in human, livestock, and plants. Next slide. Now, what are the evolutionary, major evolutionary differences between the viruses and the most evolved human being. Viruses are actually the example of retrogressive evolution, whereas humans are the example of progressive evolution. They learn on how to survive in host. And whereas humans are evolved based on changes occurring due to infections. And in case of viruses, only the information required to survive in a host is transferred to the generation, rather generation to generation. Whereas in case of human being, it takes generations to evolve. Now, viral evolution is based on the host environment and its surrounding. Whereas in case of human being, many viruses are responsible for the evolution of human race. And rate of evolution of viruses varies from minimum to maximum. DNA viruses have uh, evolution rate is less than the RNA viruses. Whereas in case of rate of 
human evolution it varies based on the infections region socio demographic status and various other external factors next slide please next slide hello hmm. now this slide represent the relative impact of viral families on human over time uh, you see at about 7 million years ago the human lineage are diverged from chimpanzee and baboon our our rather extinct relatives and in this particular era human retroviruses probably originate and inserted into the human genome after divergence from other apes and one example is the is the alternative splicing of the leptin receptor and in about 2 two lakh years ago automatically modern humans emerged as the african continent they relatively limited geographic area in which the human evolved and allowed to go different places and the, this time actually several viruses viruses like polio virus uh, pico rna virus that family probably emerged uh, 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 during this period to 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 in the in the in, in, within the human organism and about 60000 years modern human began spreading out of africa and this migration actually brought our species brought our species into direct conflict with the other hominids in europe and asia and in this time pico rna virus family polio virus family rhino virus family have def have a definite uh, a definite contribution in the evolution in 30000 years ago genome analysis studies indicated that the rate of human geno genomic mutations is is, is has peaked during this late 30000 years and genes of the immune system have been developed probably predominantly targeted to viruses and in 12000 years ago i am talking about the modern man the advent of agriculture and animal domestication leads to increased human population density as well as load of viruses also and several viruses having opportunity to adopt human being and became endemic in produce endemic infections like paramyxoviridae measles mumps orthomyxoviridae influenza etc next slide please next next slide ha now what is this particular covid 19 what is its family history i everybody knows that this is a virus this virus is a zoonotic origin that means animal virus now you see an animal virus when lost its host or come to a new host it try to aggressively try to establish itself into the into the new host and that's why the infection rate in initial stage was very aggressive now in course of time this aggressiveness will be reduced and virus will be will produce more asymptomatic infection rather than symptomatic one now covid 19 actually corona covid corona virus infection 19 2019 it was reported from a part of the china you all all knows the story and the corona virus disease is actually a virus caused by a newly discovered corona virus family is corona viridae nido viralis is the order its diameter varies from 65 to 125 and it has a single stranded positive sense rna what does it means means this virus rna can act as a messenger rna when introduced to the body so that it cannot have to go to the nucleus to produce mrna and its copies this is the advantage and that that's why this virus do not go to the nucleus also it's an enveloped virus and already told positive sense single stranded rna it has uh, several uh, family members divided into subgroup like alpha beta gamma and delta in alpha there are two uh, viruses which actually uh, originated or uh, discovered in 1960s 2229e and nl63 they are uh, they produce common cold and are responsible for nearly uh, 15 to 20% of cold infections uh, in in modern times and the beta group contains another two old one oc43 and hku1 these are discovered earlier um, and recent discoveries of severe acute respiratory syndrome viruses 
three members of this family. 2002, three, uh, in which I have, we have also uh, ready to do work, but uh, in India, it has not affected SARS coronavirus, uh, again uh, originated from China. And then a uh, Middle East respiratory infection originated from uh, camel uh, in 2012 13, and later it distributed in some other parts also, and recent one, the SARS coronavirus 2. The basic differences between the earlier one and this one is their penetration power, ability to do infection, and some other minor differences, which is actually helpful in determining its strategy to control. Now, gamma and delta, they are, they, these viruses originally from birds and animals, and this family, actually COVID virus family, or coronavirus, they, they mainly belongs to most, almost all, many, many animals they used to stay, but human only seven viruses have been identified till then. SARS, influenza A like H5N1, MERS coronavirus, they can cause acute lung injury to acute respiratory distress, leading to pulmonary failure and even to death. Next slide. Next slide, please. Now, what is coronavirus? Already you know about, but this is the structure, very lucrative structure drawn and single standard RNA virus. It appears, it has crown-like appearance, that is their projections in the in their outer outer cover. Corona is a corona is a Latin word called as crown due to the presence of spike glycoprotein on their envelope. Genomic characterization reveal that probably the origin is bat and rodent are the gene source of these viruses, particularly the coronavirus. And have a diameter between 60 to 140. They are sensitive to ultraviolet ray and heat. The interaction of coronavirus for its receptor site, ACE2 and CD147 receptor in human, is the route of entry. Still, the information comes. Not only these two other other receptor site has already been identified. Next slide, please. Hello. Next slide. Now, coronavirus disease. Uh, I have already already mentioned or you already know this is the distribution now the distribution is much more it is some older one and the disease was first identified in December now in nearly six months time has gone and the virus has modified into different forms in different parts of the world it has infected more than uh, 30 lakh is the old one we, you already know the, uh, it's a huge infection rate even in India more than two lakhs people have been infect, infected uh, so currently there is no vaccine, no antivirus, specific antivirals or no treatment. But people are, next slide. Next slide. Huh? Now COVID-19 spread. Is it a gift from China? December to 2, December to, to date, it was, it was uh, old at the 31st, 30th April, uh, but uh, it is uh, May, June. Huh? Uh, the uh, you see number is much more it's a old slide i'm sorry because i cannot able to update all the things because we are uh, very much busy with the uh, testing protocol and testing things nearly 800 to 1000 samples are tested here per day in three shifts the work is going on next slide yes this is actually the reservoir and mode of transmission Coronavirus can be transmitted from bats, that is, that are birds, to rodents, to other animals, and probably through these to human origin, human human. Actually, alpha virus, its lineage is BCD, and beta coronavirus lineage is A. So, and these are the gamma or gamma and delta uh, coronavirus virus. So, this is probably the <coughs> transmission line. Next slide, please. And this is the character. Already you, you heard about the characteristics of these viruses, but I will say some special things on it. Coronavirus genome is not very big. It's a 30 kilo base. Encodes four major structural protein, spike protein, membrane protein, envelope protein, and nucleus protein. Now, spike protein, it helps to enter into the host. So if, and in the host cell, there are several chairs. When the chair is there, this is actually the life history of this virus. Uh, how the virus enters into the host. SARS coronavirus have 
four proteins already I told structural proteins containing and some other proteins in the nucleus that is uh, RNA dependent RNA polymerase, chymotrypsin like protease, papin like protease, helicase, glycoprotein, and accessory protein. First, S protein bind with the ACE2 receptor. Now, this ACE2 receptor, actually, ACE receptor, SE, ACE, angiotensin, this receptor is known to everybody and known to human beings also. A lot of signals are there and it, 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 it actually very needful receptor uh, for the human being also. But the binding of ACE2 receptor by this particular virus is a, is a, is a complicated one. Change its conformation to fuse with the viral E protein and the host cell membrane via endosomal pathway. You see, the virus undergoes, attaches with the host, go to the in, go inside and fused, and then it releases its genomic DNA. And finally, it, it takes the help of endoplasmic, RAP endoplasmic reticulum and Golgi apparatus to, to convert its uh, genomic, genomic material and its structural material to produce thousands of copies, millions of copies of viruses, and then they assembled and ultimately ruptured the cell to come out, or by endocytosis it come out and infect the new cells. Now, it releases its RNA in the cell, RNA translated into viral replicase polyprotein, 1A and 1AB. Polyproteins are clipped by viral, viral protease, and this produces many subgenomic messenger RNA by transcription, finally packed it up and come out. Next slide. Next slide, please. Now, this is the clinical presentation, you know, uh, fever, hemoptosis, cough, myalgia, a lot of things are there. Actually, in 2007, we worked with another coronavirus and rotavirus, and we uh, we found that a theaflavin of uh, black tea can able to block uh, coronavirus and rotavirus. Both corona and rotavirus grown in the intestinal tract. So, coronavirus can grow in the intestinal tract, but in, this, in case of this particular virus, whether it can able to stay in the, uh, in, the in our fecal, go into the fecal route and stay in the intestine is not known, but there is a possibility that this, this virus can adopt it to our intestine also. So, uh, and transmission goes on through this uh, bad coronavirus, direct contact with probably pangolin, and then to human being, and human being to human being, man to man. Next. Now, one, one thing I have to mention here, remember one thing, this, the virus cannot able to move, virus cannot able to fly, virus cannot able to transmit it by any other means except by human being. So, when we talk, when we sneeze, when we cough, the droplet carries the virus and if it comes to the contact of our mouth, nose or eyes, we can be infected. So, somehow, we have to protect ourselves from these way of transmission. Why it is so dangerous? Because it is it goes through breathing actually and we have to breathe. One of the major mechanism we have to breathe and that's why the possibility of transmitting this virus to a huge population eh? that's why this is this is the danger we have to think on it. So headache, cough, muscle pain, fever, tiredness but the major symptom is whether you are feeling about the shortness of breath or breathing difficulties, then only you can contact your doctor. Otherwise, it can subside in case of majority of the cases, more than 90% cases, the fever and other things goes with trying. Next slide. Now, you can you can see from this, uh, from this slide how the complications comes. First of all, what is the duty of our lung is the air exchange. It's a Within the lung, we know that the air sacs are there called as alveolus, is supplied by capillaries where RBC releases carbon dioxide and take up oxygen. This particular alveoli contain two types of cell. One is thin type of cell, type 1, and other is second type of cell which secrete a surfactant so that it helps the alveolus to prevent from collapsing. Now, this is the area which the virus undergoes multiplication and the damage. When the infection goes on, spike protein of the virus bind to ACE2 receptor on alveoli cell type 2 
to allow the virus to inject its RNA. When the virus RNA goes inside the cell, it takes up the control of the cell and produces numerous copies of the virus, releases the progeny virion into the alveolus that infect the nearby healthy cells again. Now, in case of moderate infection, vasodilation, that is increased permeability, and macrophage release, cytokines, inflammatory signals, a lot of things happen, which usually happen to be. But one thing in moderate and severe cases takes place, that is the impaired gas exchange. When immune cells, when that infection goes on, immune cell comes into the rescue and attacking the area, some healthy alveolar cells also killed by the immune cells, resulting the hindrance of the gas exchange. Going to, alveoli goes to, are collapsed, because of the lack of surfactant, and then they attaches each other, undergoes inflammatory condition, more inflammation comes, and the immune response in this particular case, when the after infection, type 2 cells releases inflammatory signal to recruit macrophage, macrophage, neutrophil, all, all come to the rescue, and macrophage releases cytokine to go, that cause the vasodilation to allow more cells to reach to the injury, injury, injury site, and uh, fluid accumulates within the, then the accumulation of fluid takes place within the alveoli. This fluid then diluted the surfactant and the, that triggered the alveolar collapse, which decreased gas exchange, not only decreased gas exchange, but also, also increased the breathing time. That's why breathing, uh, uh, breathing time will be more. So, because the oxygen tension will uh, start, uh, will, will develop there. Then neutrophil recruited at the site of infection and uh, they, they releases uh, reactive oxygen species that destroy the infected cell. But this time, during this time, the alveolar, the damaged cells along with the virus produce a network called as netosis and that network, neutrophil and all other macrophage, all other things, which goes for the rescue of the, of the uh, uh, lung, undergoes trapped. And that's why they cannot damage the virus at all. Now, collapses of alveolus due to damage of type 1 and type 2 cells causing ARDS, which we call as acute respiratory distress syndrome, and then inflammation, if severe, the protein D fluid enter into the bloodstream, travel to the whole body, causing systemic inflammation and ultimately damage to the cells. And even it can go to uh, produce systemic inflammatory response syndrome that may lead to septic shock and multi-organ failure. Now, in the first stage, you can stay home, but in the second and third stage, symptom come cough, like dry cough, fever, etc. And when fluid accumulation starts inside the alveoli, then on the shortness of breath and pneumonia develop. So this is a very, very sensitive place and very sensitive time. You have to judge this. And until and unless you, you do not feel any shortness of breath, you don't have to take any doctors. Uh, uh, rather, uh, you don't have to visit doctors. And rather, you can talk to over phone in your home and you can treat according to the symptom. Now, if pneumonia develops, then hospitalization required and danger of, this is the danger of, uh, because this is high risk, high risk people are in the danger uh, and secondary infection may occur here also. People may go to intensive, may, may admit to intensive care, require ventilation, life support, complications may continue. And in some cases, even in this that stage, people can survive and come back. Next slide. Now, in severe cases, this is the picture of in severe cases. In 50 to 25, 20% cases, 15 to 20% cases, the cytokine storm takes place that causes damage to the body's own cell and defending the virus, own cell then defending the virus, which may lead to the rapid deterioration if in non-comorbid patient also. So, collapse of large number of alveoli, alveoli require ventilation. In acute respiratory distress stage, the surfactant, surfactant of type 2 cells that help the alveoli to, to, to avoid collapsing is undergoes dilution and with that cellular debris, the, it, it, it stops or it, it's impaired the gas exchange process leading to the reduced oxygen in the blood, blood, blood stream. And in that case, the patient needs ventilation, ventilation support. In most severe cases, this protein rich fluid enters the lung bloodstream and resulting septic shock, multi-organ failure, even to death. Okay, so this is actually the complicated case. Next. Next slide. Now, what research can do 
already you you you, you heard from uh, ida uh, dr ida uh, regarding all these things but in in a, in a, in, a, uh, in a very not cell we can do three things one is test treat and prevent now initially we 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 managed to do certain regulation regulatory guidelines first is first is uh, so called social distancing i call this i call this physical distancing there is nothing called social distancing okay and social distancing depend on society but physical distancing depend on you if you are uh, aware about the fact uh, if you are uh, rather uh, uh, interested in your own health then you have to maintain certain distance because when you talk now from asymptomatic person virus can transmit to a healthy one so use a mask maintaining certain distance and hand washing these are the three primary things we have to do and in test case of test we have to develop more accurate diagnostic test in a collaborative approach short term public health surveillance tool to detect cases isolation which we are doing and the treatment with molecular methods and long term point of care diagnostics of health worker we are also working in this field and then identify and develop therapies in collaboration and that therapy should be safe for us active against coronavirus that means specific therapy quick production of millions of doses and delivery to the low resource setting that is the treatment protocol treatment area and in prevent area identify the potential vaccine or monoclonal antibody or polyclonal it depends on the on the virus type and the disease it produce high efficacy in community some of the uh, indian lab indian laboratories and indian companies are doing this uh, for for community protection safe it, it should be safe in human being active against covid 19 and quick production in millions of doses and deliverable in low resource setting also so next slide please now being a person of virology working for last 20 years with credential a lot of publications patent etc i think the viral infection can be controlled by three ways one is the public health measure second is vaccination and third is the drug development vaccination a public health measures means washing of hand for 20 second every 45 to 60 minute social distancing we we call it as personal or physical distancing 3 to 6 feet minimum use of triple layer mask during talking don't touch anything these are the major things and even when you talk now you tell your friends to listen with his with his back side and he can he can move his uh, head in in opposite direction so that when a person yeah, talk problem aa raha hai har jagah pe hello and second is vaccination several virus viruses have been tamed by vaccination like smallpox hepatitis but se several viruses are not like influenza hiv aids etc secondly vaccine against rna virus is not very easy to come maybe vaccine will come within another 6 months or well one year but there is a question whether the vaccine is actually needed that time or not you see you can you tell us can you tell me that how many adults are require virus require vaccination for viruses there is nothing no secondly drug development for prophylactic of or individuals those infected now since 1970s there is no antivirals developed for last 50 years why because almost all antivirals are nucleic acid origin and nucleic acid derivative they are toxic that's why they are toxic because they are nucleic acid derivative and people that's people that, that's why people are trying to use the old drugs by repurposing actually i remember one thing in 1984 when i submitted my phd thesis i have coined one term drugs are basically multifunctional and very few drugs are very mono, mono specific in function that means a single drug at different dose level act differently and repurposing is also like that and this is the virus comes from a from animal so its aggressiveness is different and probably i feel that this virus cannot be tamed with a single antiviral it may require more than one drug in combination <coughs> number 1 number 2 drug development is not very easy ha eh? and i am i am in the field for last 20 years i am telling you and uh, i am working with herpes virus in a very depth but still 
I feel that developing a drug against this virus is not very easy. And third thing is that in course of time, I told in February probably, uh, in, a, in, a, in an interview in Hindu and then in Times of India, that this virus slowly loses its ability or the aggressiveness of infection and more and more people will be will be asymptomatic in nature now nearly 81 to 82 percent people are are asymptomatic in nature and of course viruses virus already goes certain modifications in non-structural protein and that <coughs> that modification is continuing that is that type of mutation is continuing and you see RNA viruses are more frequent or more prone to uh, mutations, it will also mutate easily. Next slide. Next slide. So nothing to be worried because uh, you see, virus will come and virus will go. Now, regarding drug development, please, this, Davala, please, please do something. The slide is not visible. Uh, I'm talking about virus control strategy. Uh, public health measures are never totally effective, hence vaccination is the second strategy, but vaccination cannot be able to eliminate all. Next slide. Now, how to prevent the transmission of this virus? To prevent transmission and develop a vaccine, scientists around the globe are trying to understand how SARS coronavirus spread. To date, we came to know that respiratory droplet is the only way probably is the major way to transmit the virus. So the uh, physical distancing, hand washing, wearing of masks, these are the way to prevent the exposure of respiratory droplet. Actually, the, vi the this virus affects lung and airways. Symptom is there, asymptomatic, but have transmissible ability of the virus. That means shedding the virus and cause pneumonia to organ failure. This is actually asymptomatic stage. And uh, there is a question uh, asked by the previous speaker. It is a mystery, asymptomatic. Why so many people are asymptomatic in India? It is a mystery. No, madam, it is not mystery. There is no mystery in science. Mystery, mystery may be, may be in a uh, uh, colloquial term you can say, but in science there is no mystery. This is the nature of the virus. When a virus loses, loses uh, or when a person lose his or her uh, house, he tried to find the second house desperately. The virus started desperately of infecting people to adapt people. And by time, the viruses are now known how to adapt within the human organism, within the human host. So slowly it will go. And probably within another few months, we will see the sizable percentage of people will be will be infected. I do not know whether it is 50% or 60% as some virologists are telling it. But my question is that we are not Jyotis. So we cannot calculate like that. And there is no other calculation that a virologist can speak that it will affect 50% or 60% of the population. A sizable amount of population will be infected. In case of India, if it, if it is 1% population is infected, then it is probably it comes to be 1.3 or 1.35 crore. It's a huge population, but the percent is only one. So you have to calculate on that. Now, this virus actually, it was found that the human cell atlas consortium database of single cell RNA sequencing from different 20 different tissues of non-infected people shows that the virus can infect lung, nasal cavity, eye, guts, heart, kidney, liver. These cells are exposed, express both the key entry proteins, that is ACE2 receptor and transmembrane proteins serine protein, protease 2. Now the receptor protein, ACE2 and serine mem uh, transmembrane serine protease, they activate virus entry in cells of this organ and the inner lining of the nose. Now initial infection route is that and mucus producing goblet and ciliated cell has the highest level of ACE2 and transmembrane serine protease 2 receptor. That's why the possibility of infecting these two types of cells is much more. Next slide. Next slide, please. Now, although many drugs are in clinical trial or in developmental pipeline, currently there is no drug or vaccine for the effective, effective controlling of this particular deadly virus. 
Scientists around the globe are actively involved in pondering the chemical moiety that would arrest the invasion and the multiplication within the host. But until then, what we can do, we can we can learn how a how a real antiviral is because you see antivirals cannot be developed. Antivirals development is a totally different aspect. So, what is the feature of an antiviral drug? An ideal antiviral drug should effectively inhibit essential viral process. It should prevent the development of drug-resistant viruses. It should be broad spectrum of activity. That means single drug can be effective against hundreds of common cold viruses. It will not affect the host system. And the first feature is obvious, but the remaining depend on viral processes being targeted. Till date, there are 37 to 40 molecules permitted by the US FDA for antiviral treatment. And almost all are nucleic acid derivatives. Thus, to develop an effective antiviral drug with minimum effect on host, we need to identify the target that cannot mutate rapidly. Focus on conjured features of the viral genome. Research is still going on until the answer of these two things are very are coming in a very precise, very specific manner. Specific drug development for these viruses will not be easy. Next slide. <coughs> Next slide. Next slide, please. Now, what are the viral targets so far known and the cellular target? So far known viral target is spike protein, particularly at S1 and S2 domain. That actually did the help the virus to fix it with the host membrane in a very specific, specific manner or precise manner and then enter into the host. And second is envelope protein, DL pro and nucleocapsid, major protein like chymotrypsin like protease, RNA dependent RNA polymerase. But in case of cellular target, where we can intervene is the lung type 2 pneumocytes or alveoli, RNAs for ACE2 and transmembrane serine protease. Nasal passage, mucus express RNA and ACE2, and we are trying in this level to develop certain things which can prevent the entry of the virus uh, without damaging the ACE, function of uh, ACE. And these particularly TMPRSS2 activate spike protein to allow the cell entry and furin helps it to attach. There are several uh, several blockers of these particular uh, three, uh, three targets. So people are also trying in that area for drug development. Next, next slide, please. So probably there are six probable targets so far. People know to establish the infection virus enter into the receptor site, cell attachment by receptor site, followed by fusion and penetration. So angiotensin converting enzyme this is the main gateway. Then transmembrane protein serine protein protease two. Then furin as receptor. Then DPP four and CD147, and finally the glucose-regulated protein 78. All these receptors have some role to play during the entry of the virus. Next slide. Banappa, I mean, I mean, lecture. Now the possible drug target can be the multiple way, ACE2, all the receptor rather. And along with the receptor, also the viral RNA. So now that we do not know what, what we can able to target, but traditional phytoconstituent based polyherbal formulation can have the ability to work in this particular area. We are working in a particular area of this, uh, 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 in which uh, some of the part of this presentation is there. And uh, another uh, three, four months will tell us uh, whether we, are, uh, we can able to prevent the uh, uh, spread of this virus or not. And by this time, I think, uh, virus also able to minimize its infection potential uh, in, in, in a short period of time, uh, probably in this year. But the virus will be there in the community and another few years we have to live with these viruses frequently or time to time. Next slide, please. Next slide. So these are some of the potentially purposeable drug people are trying in different parts of the world some good result and some bad results or some mixed result. But till that, there is no drug come out as a specific therapy for this genotic virus. Next slide. 
these are some of the references you can get other references from our website next chatopathya sir that is the end of the ppt okay okay so thank you so much and the last one was the uh, was a thank you slide thank you all for your patience hearing thank you so much sir for the enlightening presentation and, and that indeed. was very informative now shall we start the question and answer session yeah. over to technical host i request all the participants to post their questions in the chat box participants can post their questions in the chat box so that i can i can get the answers from dr chatopadhyay sir if covid mutates what can be the sir sir consequences how treating your patient presently with coronavirus mostly present treatment is based on uh, on the on the uh, symptom rather symptomatic and in some cases some drug particularly c4 drug regimen is given by the hospital we are not actually treating we are we are attached with the hospital and being a cmr institute we, we provide our feedback to them and the patient is in the nearby hospital uh, beams uh, uh, belagavi institute of medical science till that the basic basic treatment goes on symptomatic symptomatic treatment until and unless the patient is a severe one next question is the amount of ace2 protein receptor different in male female uh, it is still under investigations very difficult to uh, say right now but uh, probably there are some differences the vaccine which will be made will be of effective against all the mutant forms usually usually the it depends on the process or depends on the type of vaccine what is vaccine actually what is vaccine you know vaccine is nothing anybody can make a vaccine vaccine is either the whole virus or a part of the virus whole virus can be used as in two ways by heat kill or some way you you can you can uh, uh, inhibit the ability of the virus to infect live attenuated vaccine or chemically or heat treated vaccine and second is the any part of the virus sub unit vaccine or the rna you you can use the rna of the virus as rna vaccine so vaccine be of different type but we do not know whether this virus can be tamed with the vaccine because earlier three two forms Uh, SARS coronavirus one and MERS. We are still finding a lot of things. So until and unless full picture is clear, uh, it is very difficult because this is a six months old baby. So how do you know all the things? Huh? Next question. How long, according to you, does the com communal spread of the virus last? Very good question. Because it depend on you, it depend on me, it depend on us. if we are sympathetic to our health then we have not to go to allopathy or homeopathy only sympathy is required for you if you have sympathy on your health you can take the steps which we, which the government is trying to establish which icmr is telling which cd is uh, with uh, who is telling okay so if you maintain those things very cautiously chances of getting infection will be much 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 less and another thing i am telling you most of the infection goes from direct to direct contact indirect infection is very 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 less and there is no chance even even the some droplet say for example a, a uh, vendor vending uh, fruits and vegetables coming to your place say for he is a asymptomatic patient coughing and he is coughing and some of the uh, some of the spitting is there in the uh, vegetable you take that vegetable and you cook you take it in morning cook in afternoon nearly or noon so there is few hours gap in these few hours do you think that that virus can able to infect and second thing the virus need to certain amount of viruses required we call as inoculum size 
minimum 100 virus particle is required to infect in most of the viruses it's most of the most of the viruses that infect upper or lower respiratory tract respiratory viruses even rtpcr cannot able to recognize if the virus particle number is less than 50 okay so until and unless the, that critical number is there infection will not ca cause and this type of infection which is going on in india is actually in a close contract because population density and the space the ratio is very very less that's why the infection infection is going on this way here also we are getting thousands of thousand sample per day and we are in the field eh? not like laboratory in which only only research is going on we have the laboratory in which patient and the research both are going on parallelly hand to hand it is my my assumption or my rather scientific uh, knowledge as i am working with the virus biology for last 20 years i am telling that this virus virus is not characterless it, it is not loose character virus it has definite character so it shows its characteristics only thing is that we are not aware about this type of virus previously so fast uh, infecting from other part to other uh, one part of the world to other part because the world is a global village now so it is very easy to transfer one virus from one part to other part how long does the virus live in non living things it depends on few hours to one or two days maximum but virus cannot living outside virus you can say whether the virus is able to transmit or able to produce infection after coming from the non living surface usually not just like a dust particle if someone give one example showing one example that the virus from third any any rather any any places they put their hand and virus is transmitted so in one example there is no example most of the people are transmitted from people so people to people transmission is the major way is the spike protein is showing a pleomorphic nature actually spike protein contain contain uh, say uh, it's it's it, this protein is a specific protein until there is no 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 information whether the spike protein goes modifications pleomorphic nature means it can fit in anything but so far the knowledge no knowledge goes the spike protein can fit what are the surfaces there in in the human cells until and unless there are six sites detected or six receptor sites detected in which the spike protein can able to fit we want to hear from your feedback so please fill the feedback link today's session and let us know your thought okay this for participant is and, and any other question hello yes sir there are a few more questions about ah, please, please please yes if humans do develop immunity with the help of uh, vaccines how long does it last as immunity is short lived for the corona virus that cause common cold and what kind of immune response should vaccine developer look for yes this is a right question and good question also you see immunity of any infection usually there is a belief if virus infect once the person get lifelong immunity but this is not true for all viruses immunity if the virus viruses content is full protein in nature then immunity will long for last long lasts lasting long and if it is glycoprotein or other things then the immunity will not last for longer second thing protection regarding protection there are many viruses which do not comes to blood the viruses those who do not come to blood even even antibody produced by the body antibody will not be effective just like hsv herpes simplex virus 95% people has got herpes simplex virus uh, antibody but we do not get any protection in this case the virus do not go to blood directly it goes to lungs and from lungs antibody produces so the protection from that antibody depends it very variable and the antibody if you get from a uh, asymptomatic patient possibly it will not work and that's why antibody test kit will not working till now till now some laboratories are test, testing these things actually what happened uh, most of the people do not have better knowledge in virus biology and in india the scarcity of virologists is much more because some of the people those who are doing virology mostly epidemiology or something else 
Very few people are there who can isolate the virus and can test on it, in which our laboratory is doing for last 20 years. Okay, so this virus, to, to, to the, to the knowledge we gathered till date, can tell one thing, don't worry, this virus will go, because in a biological material, now once it comes, it has to go. Now the thing is that how long it can stay, it all depends on us. Whether we want it to transmit from generation to generation, then it will transmit, but in a, in a mild form. And it will be like its earlier relatives. It will not be very infectious in coming days. So don't worry, just maintain the things, maintain physical distancing, use mask, use hand washing, and the uh, public health measures which we know. As well as be aware about your elderly and your child below five years of old age.